Chapter 23. Dream a little dream of us. How that comic turn out pretty good, said Harold. Yeah, not too shabby, said George. Let's go to school and make copies of it. But, but what if somebody sees us, said Harold. Don't worry, said George. I've got it fi all figured out. Soon, George and Harold got dressed and headed to school and sneaked into the office. No time at all. They were running off copies of their new comic book and stapling of them together. Things were going very well until the school secretary, Miss Anne Fro, came back from her lunch break. What are you kids doing in my office? Miss Anne Fro yelled. We're not in your office, said George with a mis mischievous smile. You're dreaming. Dreaming? said Miss Anne Fro. Yeah, and I can prove it, said George. I can tell the teacher, Miss Ripple, just to just call our teacher, Miss Ripple, on the intercom. She'll tell you that we're both in classes, class right now. In class? said Miss Anthro. Yep, said George. Obviously, we can't be in two places at the same time. And that, and this is how to be a dream, right? Miss Anfro was suspicious. She grabbed the microphone on the intercom and contacted on Miss Ribble's room. Miss Ribble, she said, "Where are George and Harold? Where, where are George and Harold right now? Right there, right here in my classroom." Miss Ribble replied to, to the speaker. "Oh, really?" said Miss Anfro. Said Miss Ribble. They've been here all day. Miss Sampho was stunned. Then she got a sneaky idea. All right, she said. If they're really in your classroom, then send them both to the office right now. Okay, said Miss Ribble. Miss Ribble turned and looked at George and Harold with a snarly grin. I don't know why you chick, you kids, are trying to pull, she said. But you can't fool me! Suddenly, yesterday George and yesterday Harold walked into the office. Miss Anfro looked at them screaming. Then, then she looked at George and Harold and screamed again. Her head made my, my switching sound and as it swung back and forth between George and Harold. And yesterday, George and Harold. See? And yesterday, George and yesterday, Harold. See? Said George. I told you it was a dream. You, you're right, cried Miss Sampro. It, it all seems so it. But I must be dreaming. Of course you are, said George. And you, and why you should, you waste a pretty good dream hanging around the office? That's a good point, said Miss Anfro. And why about we wearing such touch restoring suits? After all, it's my dream. I can do everything I want. No, wait a minute, said Harold. But it was too late. Miss Anfro posted her dress over her head, ripped it off, and threw her up the window. Whee! She yelled, dreaming is fun. And then she ran away, laughing her head and, and then and, uh, off and slammed the office door behind her. What are you guys doing here? said yesterday George snarly. This is our day to be at school. We ran out of food and we needed to buy some supplies, said George. So we made a new comic to sell on the playground. Yesterday George, I mean yesterday Harold walked over 
to the copy machine and inspected the new comic. How many do you make? He asked. A hundred, said the girl. Well, leave them to us. Well, leave them with us, said the Harold. We'll sell them at recess today and bring the money to the treehouse after school. Yeah, said George. But we, you guys need to get out of here. Yes, sir, George interrupted. If anybody else catches us together, we're, we're all going to be in big trouble. All right, all right, said George. Get out now! Shout yes, Ray George angrily. All right, said George. Gee, you wheeze. Yes, Ray George. Yes, Ray Harold scooped up the comics in their arms and left the office in a huff. Man, said George. Today was supposed to be our day and our fun, but they, but we won't, but we won't let us. I know. Do you, we think we are? We can tell us what to do, said George. I'm not the boss of me. Me either, said Harold. We're, I'm going to to do whatever I want if I don't want to be me too. That's telling, your, that's telling yourself, said George.